Hey everybody, I'm Mrs. Bodishan, and today we're going to be talking about solubility curves. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with what the graph actually looks like. So our x-axis is generally going to be temperature, and then the y is going to be our solute. This is usually going to be in grams, and it's going to be dissolved in 100 grams of water, okay? Um, you will see that there is one line on our graph to start out with, so you can kind of get a feel of what it's showing you. The bottom underneath the line is considered unsaturated. Now remember, unsaturated means that you can still dissolve more solute in the water um, before it becomes saturated. And saturated is exactly on the line. In other words, touching the line, okay? And that means that is the maximum amount of solute that can dissolve in that solvent. And then over top of the line, you can see that we have super saturated. And this is where we have too much solute in our solution and it will fall out of solution. So um, if it cools down, you can see it falling out of solution or perhaps it's already cooled down and it's just sitting at the bottom of the container undissolved, all right? So let's go ahead and try a couple practice questions. How many grams of KNO3 can be dissolved in 100 grams of water at 70 degrees Celsius? Go ahead and pause and try these, you guys. I will give you the answers right afterwards, uh, but I want you to try it first, okay? All right, here's the answer. So we have to first start by looking at KNO3. There's lots of lines going on in this graph, so we only want to look at one at a time. This one is KNO3. This green line is what we are going to be referring to here. Notice it says it can be dissolved in 100 grams of water. You guys, do not look for 100 grams on this chart. Don't go like, oh, this is grams. That's not what it's talking about. It's, li it's literally talking about grams of salt in 100 grams of water. It's referring to your, uh, your y-axis or this graph in particular. So I need you to um, kind of ignore that and just say, hey, it's referring to this graph for now, okay? And then um, we are at 70 degrees. So this is temperature. We are gonna go to 70 degrees, go straight up until we intersect that green line, but we don't intersect the green line on this graph. We have to go and overextend ourselves from the graph and kind of, um, make an estimate of where it would intersect and this one is around 140 grams, but you guys know this is not exact right because this isn't on the graph We are merely making an estimate of where they would actually hit and intersect Let's try another one How many grams of NaNO3 can be dissolved in hundred grams of water at 30 degrees pause and I'll give you the answer in a second All right, let's check it out Remember that 100 grams of water is referring to your graph, okay? And then we want to find our NaNO3, and that is this deep burgundy line up here. And we are at 30 degrees. So 30 degrees goes straight on up until you hit the burgundy line. And we need to see um, how many grams will be dissolved. So if we go straight over, we are at 95 grams can be dissolved there. And actually that is at its saturation point. That's why it can be dissolved there, right? Okay, let's try the next one. If you have 20 grams of NaCl dissolved in 100 grams of water at 50 degrees Celsius, how many more grams can be dissolved at that temperature? Pause and I'll tell you the answer in a second. All right, let's check it out. So we are looking for NaCl, which is this baby blue line right here. Um, remember the 100 grams of water is referring to our graph so we can skip over that number we're not looking for it uh, we are going to be looking for 50 degrees however right <clears throat> here's 50 degrees we go straight on up to 20 grams here is 20 grams that is referring to our question okay so this is kind of where our stopping point is going to be but it asks us how many more grams can be dissolved at that temperature so we know we're going to stay at 50 degrees Celsius, and from here, we have 20 grams already dissolved. We can go another 10, and then another about 7, okay? So about 17 more can be dissolved, because remember, at the saturation point on the line, that is the maximum amount that can be dissolved. So that's as far as we can go at 50 degrees Celsius. All right, try another one. If you have 100 um, grams of PbNO32 dissolved at 40 degrees Celsius, how many grams of PbNO32 will remain undissolved? So now this is a different question. Pause and try to figure it out. Okay, here we go. So 
we know we are looking for PBNO32, which is our yellow line that we're going to be referring to for this question. Um, now, it says we have 100 grams of it. It doesn't say we have 100 grams of water. So this, in this case, we're not looking at our y-axis for the 100 grams of water. We're looking at it for our solute. So we need to actually go over to 100 grams, right? Um, we need to go over, how far over? To 40 degrees. So here's 40 degrees all the way up to 100. And this is where kind of our dot or ending point is. But that's not what it's asking us. It's asking us how many grams will remain undissolved. Well, the saturation point at 40 degrees for a PBNO32 is right here. And this is about 75 grams. Um, but we have put in 100 grams. So how much will sit at the bottom of the beaker? It's going to be 25. You just um, subtract 100 minus that 75. And that's how much will remain undissolved at the bottom of your beaker. Let's try another one. 60 grams of KClO3 is dissolved in 100 grams of water at 90 degrees Celsius. Is the solution saturated, unsaturated, or super saturated? Pause, and I'll show you the answer in a second. Let's check it out. So we are looking for KClO3, which is going to be this brown line right here, KClO3. Um, and then we need to look for 60 grams. Here is 60 grams, and we're going over to 90 degrees, 90 degrees. So here is our little dot, right? Um, and we want to know, is it saturated, super saturated, or unsaturated? Well, this is our brown line we're looking at, and it is clearly above the brown line, right? Anything above the line is going to be super saturated, which means it has dissolved um, all it can, and there's still extra that will either fall out of solution or is already at the bottom of the beaker that will not dissolve at that temperature, okay? So this is a super saturated solution. You all, if you like this and it was helpful, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like this video, join me next time for more. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye, everybody.